Welcome back to Coaching Process Wins, and uh, we're going to launch a, a thing here with our videos. Uh, I call it a webcast. You know, you got a podcast where you uh, have interviews, but uh, and there already may be a webcast thing out there, but uh, what we're going to do is a, a webcast. That's what I'm going to call it. And, uh, I've got a, a fine gentleman uh, that I want to introduce you all to. Good football coach has got a ton of information and a wealth of information, studies the game and shares with coaches, which is what this thing's all about, sharing with coaches. Uh, his name is Tony Rodriguez, and he's out of Tampa, Florida. I met him down at a, a coaching clinic earlier this year and uh, uh, pleased to get to know him and hope I get to know him better and want the whole world to know about Tony. Tony, welcome to Coaching Process Wins, man. Hey, good morning, Coach. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you get. You're on the. Uh, you're on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. So, uh, it's almost afternoon for you. So, uh, I'm still drinking my coffee, brother. <laughs> yeah, we're about to have lunch here. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, uh, I was going to tell you. Uh, this is what I put in my mouth every time I coach. I'm going to send you a can of this. Have you heard of Grinds? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, when I met you, that uh, that's oh, what you. Right. Yeah, yeah, those are great. I tried yeah. it. I got the, the mocha flavor. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do peppermint, man. I'm, I'm trying to tell <laughs> coaches about this stuff. So I'm going to put one in there so I can relax and learn a little ball, man. Hey, hey. Tell, uh, tell everybody a little bit about, you know, Tony Rodriguez, where you are and, and what you're doing and how you're sharing with football coaches, man. And then we'll get started with all the football. All right. Well, basically, I'm, I'm an offensive coordinator uh, here in the Tampa area at a school called East Bay High School, and I love it. You know, I've, I've, I've been coaching for about 10 years now, and, uh, you know, I'm coaching with some of my best friends in the whole world. I'm actually at a, a high school where uh, I graduated from. I met my wife at, and now my son is a sophomore. They're going to be a junior next year. So it's like I've never left, and it's like a, it's a family deal. It's a really cool situation. Wow. Uh, the head coach I coach for, he's all about running the football. He loves what we do. He's one of my biggest supporters. So uh, his name's Frank LaRosa, great follow on uh, on Twitter. And uh, he's a great dude. As, as far as Twitter goes, um, uh, I originally started uh, a Twitter account called Three Phase Football. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that with you here in, in, in a second in more detail about what we do. But I originally started it. Uh, for summer camp, we we had a couple teams back out on us, and I was like, man, we need to try to have a way to network with other coaches that run our similar type of offense so that we can have a successful summer camp, and I just concentrated on the Florida at, at the beginning, and then it was amazing how it started to uh, spiral and the coaches all across America joining up on the account, and um, that's kind of where we're at. We're, we're over 1,800 followers right now, and it's 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 been great to network and connect with with triple option coaches all over all over uh, America. And we don't just have flex bone coaches, you know. That's that's the system that we primarily run is a flex bone triple option like Georgia Tech and Navy. But on the um, three phase football account, I have split back veer guys, guys that run triple option out of the eye, wishbone. Um, we even have some pistol guys and and even the gun option guys. We allow to participate <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you got the man, huh? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but it's a great time. Uh, we love the chats we have on Mondays. And uh, I got a little slide up here. I'll uh, be able to get you some more information on that. Yeah, here. yeah. Well, let's uh, let's let's transition into football. And tell me a little bit more about your chat so coaches can get more information. So yeah. uh, let's go to that now. So Tony, tell me uh, tell me a little bit about Mesh Point Monday, man. I see the the slide up here and. Uh, uh, you know, so coaches can get more information after we get off this webcast and, and go to this where they can see it on a regular basis. Yeah, I want to encourage everybody out there, no matter what kind of triple option offense you run, go follow at Three Face Football. And every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time, I always put out four questions based on a triple option topic. And basically every 15 or so minutes, a new question will pop up. And we just encourage everybody to – uh, participate and, and and so we can all learn from each other it's like a, a an ongoing uh, clinic if you will on Monday nights and uh, we all use the hashtag mesh point so let's say you, you don't make it uh, you, you know you can tune in on Tuesday and search the hashtag mesh point and you can see the dialogue from from the questions and all the responses from all the participants 
That's great. All right. I want to go back and make sure at the end here, or maybe even in the middle, we look at that again, because, uh, you know, I know you're going to share uh, a <coughs> with us today. And, um, but, you know, this is an ongoing, you know, we just always scratch the surface in this game, man. If, uh, if you feel like you got to the mountaintop, you're going to get knocked down again. And you just got to keep growing in the game and learning it because it changes and different coaches have great ideas. So, uh, uh, I want to make sure we get that honed in at Mesh Point Monday and hashtag Mesh Point. Well, let's. Uh, I want, I'm, I'm dying to see what you got to, to share um, in in scheme here. Um, so uh, keep on going, Tony. All right. Basically, I just came out with an, uh, a web a website that we created. It's threefacefootball.net, and in addition to our Mesh Point Monday chats, we have some cool T-shirts that we're offering for sale for like Fear the Veer. Uh, that's a play that everybody that runs the triple option. Uh, <laughs> so have a little pride in what we do. We got the mesh point and I even got a new shirt coming out with the logo uh, showing the quarterback and fullback meshing up there. Oh, so that'll be coming out here by next week. Uh, check our website and there's a lot of cool things on there. Uh, and then the last thing we have coming up coaches, we're, we're going to try to put on a webinar similar to kind of what me and you are doing here. Yeah. We're going to have four coaches scheduled. One that's going to talk on a split back veer, one that's going to talk on a flex bone, wishbone, pistol, and gun option. So I got four coaches here. Check the website for more information on that. But basically, wow. we're going to roll out how to coach the quarterback mechanics and the mesh points of, of option football from those different styles of, of, of play. That's sweet, man. Hey, yeah. You know, what you and I are doing right now is a, is a taste test and uh, with one just little small phase, but. Uh, Hey, you know, clinics like this, especially webinars where you can sit down on your couch and, and just get into this stuff. That's great. That's a great lineup too, man. That's a, <laughs> Carson Newman, you know, has been running that split back veer since, uh, uh, you know, Moby was a minnow man. And, uh, <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's good stuff, dude. I've met all these guys too, through the Twitter account, you know, which is, mm -hmm. which is awesome, you know? Yeah. What a great, what a great tool for co coaches. I, I live on Twitter, dude. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, uh, I want to get that back up here a little bit later and, uh, make sure we remind coaches, but, uh, yeah, we, we just keep on rocking, dude. All right. I appreciate it, coach. All right. Um, coach, you want to, um, I'm going to move into the presentation, I guess yeah. now. Okay. Let me just say something. All right. Hey, Tony, um, I know we got your first slide up here, um, and uh, I know we talked a little bit about it, uh, but uh, one thing you said that was intrigued, sure intrigued me was guys get into these darn coaching uh, uh, arguments and uh, talk about outside veer, where's the angle, where's the mesh point, where's the, where's the aim and point, et cetera. And, uh, I know that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So uh, I'm fixing to learn something, get my paper and pen out and talk to me a little bit about this. All right. Thanks coach. Uh, basically I want to go over when you hear outside veer, what we traditionally think, you know, we think it's a three man surface type of a play. Um, and, and I grew up, um, uh, my first coaching stint was coaching in the wishbone, you know? So that was one of our biggest plays was outside veer. And we always ran it to a three man surface. So always to like a tight end is what I mean by that. And mm -hmm. um, I've got some video here of this. This is a diagram of traditional three man surface outside veer. And I want to show you, uh, uh, I got two videos of this particular play. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see uh, some video here and actually we're going to the three man surface. So I guess we're going to run it up top, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Up to the right. let's, let's hit it, man. I want you to pay attention to the quarterback's footwork down the line. This is what you think, you know, traditional outside veer. We've got two clips that are going to run here. It's QB. It's not too bad, huh? <laughs> wow. He's got some, he's got some jets. He's down the line, running down the line there again. Pretty, pretty nice. I've got uh, one more clip here I'll show you. So now we got actually your guys. Uh, this is, uh, 
this kid's you coach, uh, Tony, and uh, they're running to the three-man surface here? Yes, sir. Yep. This is from yeah. the flex bone look here. We got a tight end. It's actually a, you know, a heavy tackle. And uh, we're running outside veer uh, to the tight end. Here we go. We got a, we had a big quarterback that year. He got hawked down there <laughs> a little oh. bit. Watch the, watch the backside DN is the one who chases the play down coach. That's football in Florida for you, right? Speed. <laughs> 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 but that's, that's traditional three man surface um, outside veer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You notice that, uh, that tight end, everybody got a triple team wedge blocking down play side, uh, reading the uh, evilos. Yep. So you're showing me, you know, and I'm intrigued. I, uh, now you're showing me, okay. You know, cause I, every time I've thought about it, yeah, you got to have a darn tight end in the game going to that three man surface. Uh, that way you can block down on that five technique and read that wide end, that nine technique, if you will, in man on the line of scrimmage. And, uh, so you're telling me you can do this sucker out of uh, a, a two man. Sir. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I want to show you. I'm going to go from this screen and then tell you kind of why we got away from three man surface outside of here. All right. I'll, I'll start you right now. Okay. okay. So we're back looking now at the original screen you showed uh, where you see the Y there to the, to the right on the three man surface running the outside veer. So like I said, I'm uh, chopping at the bit. Show me how you're going to do this out of the two man surface, man. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about first coach, why we kind of got away from it. We're okay. in we're an inside veer operation. That's if you ask me, coach, what, what play are you trying to hang your hat on? I'm going to tell you inside veer. That's the play we're trying to run. Um, we, we had outside veer in, but we actually stopped running it. Uh, this is 2013. And that, in that time frame, we actually experienced like 31 fumbles that year, <laughs> you know, it, and then at the root of it was this, this outside veer play, uh, was was a big part of that. Not all of it, but but a big part of it. And we basically lost confidence in the play. Now, and can, I st can I stop you right there? Let me just ask, go back and ask a question because I, I don't want to miss this. You guys stopped running what play? Inside veer or outside veer? We stopped running outside veer. Okay. So our main play we're trying to hang our hat on is inside veer. Yep. We run midline, rocket. Basically, we have the big five. Uh-huh belly iso and then we have a counter off of rocket so that's basically we, we switched our focus to the big five right and we got and we got out of running outside veer to the three-man surface and on this slide it's kind of some of the reasons so the first reason i had was the quarterback had one more set of steps that we had to rep and he had to learn so instead of you know um you know tr uh, inside veer triple option you know opening at three o'clock we actually had to teach down the line, like in, in those clips that I saw uh, showed you earlier, you know, where your first step is flat down the line, yeah. you got to gather your feet, then you reach and ride and you explode. So like he had to, we had to rep that and, and perfect it. And, and um, it, it take, you know, you have only so much time at practice, right. To, mm -hmm. to, to, to rep your, your stuff that you're going to hang your hat on uh, a fullback had to memorize another path, you know, uh, for, for us midline, we're running butt of the, the center. For inside veer, we're running butt of the guard, and then we had to teach butt of the tackle for outside veer. So it was just another thing. And then you kind of hinted at it earlier in our conversation: is we the tight end personnel for us was an issue. You know, we don't always have a kid that can block down to play tight end, and we don't always have you know an extra heavy tackle to throw in there. Fortunate, we were fortunate in 2013 to have that situation, but um, we can usually grab a kid that plays defensive end and teach him how to play tight end. But then we have the issue of him not being available at times because we have to play both ways. So that was a kind of a big factor of why we got away from it as well. Um, but here I got the bottom line was we just lost confidence in the play. We had a lot of fumbles. We felt like it was an expensive play because of the extra path, the extra steps, yeah. having to figure out the personnel issue. We didn't feel like the play hit quick enough, like inside veer and midline did either. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to show you, I got on this next slide, um, our footwork of the quarterback and kind of why I didn't like it. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, next, Coach. Yep. So if you look at the side that says no good, this is our footwork. And kind of pay attention to the lower body of the quarterback. Um, 
he's, he's, he's got all of his weight shifted to his back foot and he doesn't have his front foot on the ground. So there's this long, elongated um, uh, ride into side process going on here. And it's just very difficult for the quarterback to transition if there's any kind of penetration to your line. And we had a lot of issues um, with our mesh as a result of our footwork. Mm -hmm. So, and this goes coach for both inside veer midline and even outside veer. So like we change the way we teach our quarterbacks footwork is with the, you notice over here with a picture that says good as we teach trying to get uh, our, our two feet in the ground ASAP as fast as we can quick. We try to get them down, get them in. We're not hopping. We actually do step, but we're trying to get them in the ground quick. And you can see the quarterback on the right, he's balanced and he's ready to transition and get out of there and, 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 and uh, run the third phase, the second and third phase of the option. So when we, we improve this part of our game with inside veer and midline, as I'm going to show you the two man surface of outside veer. Okay, hey, we, Tony, real quick on the no good, just because of, uh, my technical difficulties, the last line isn't picking up. Just tell me what it says. So our, our listeners, so it says, got to wait to transition. And then what's it say? This is over on the uh, no good side. <laughs> that toolbar, man. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We, I, we get the point. I love the way your quarterbacks are where their eyes are. I see so many films where the quarterbacks are looking uh, you know, at the kid they're handing off to and not looking at their reads. So uh, good discipline in those two pictures. Yeah. Hey, Coach, that says until front foot plants. Okay, so at the bottom of no good. Yeah. Got to wait to transition until what? Front foot plants. Okay, got it, got it. You All can, right. You can see that front foot is, 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 is kind of uh, off the ground. Yeah. So he has all his weight on that back foot. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, when I listen to a coach, or I, this is the most exciting thing in football for me, just something like this, that little nuance coaching point yeah. is so big. And if you get something out of that, and I'm, talk, I'm just talking to all coaches, I can speak for myself. When I get something like this, that I feel like I got a little bit of keys to the kingdom right there, man, that's, that's cool. No, it, and it's it's paid dividends for us. I mean, getting our feet in the ground, like, as fast as we can, it extends that read, allows your quarterback to make a quicker decision. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's money, Coach, I'm telling you. Mm. I like it. All right, let's see. If, okay, here we go. I'm going to focus on uh, – we're just going to talk about defense for just a second because um, I know I'm getting long-winded here, Coach. Sorry about that. You're man. doing great, man. I uh... – <laughs> well, I'm learning football. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna load up a dead gum notebook right here, dude. <laughs> All right. So I told you we're not running outside veer anymore, right? right. So um, I kind of run into a little bit of a problem because inside veer and midline, we have the ability to have a zone cutback. Well, in order to have zone cutback, you got to have some space in there for your fullback to work. He's got, you know, and in this, uh, a defense like a 5-2, some people call this a bare front, where your, your center and both your guards are covered up. This is a clear indication that the defense is trying to take your dive away. You know what I mean? No kidding. And um, so there's zero room in there. And some people would argue with me that, you know, they would still try to run some midline um, here. And, and uh, you, you can, but there's not a whole lot of space here. So what, what I uh, – was watching a, a Navy football game one Saturday and I saw this same identical defense they were um, playing against and I seen them running triple options still. So um, I, I started looking closer and closer and I was like, dadgum, they're running outside veer to a two man surface. I got a clip I could show you of, 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 of that, but this is what I'm referring to as a five, two. Um, you got two, three techniques and, the outside linebacker, uh, I'm sorry, defensive ends in this situation, mm -hmm. nine techniques. Um, this is this is what I'm going to show you a lot of clips of us facing this particular defense, 5-2. Yeah. So that, that's, a, that, that's, that's excellent because basically what they're doing, they're, they're stopping up your A's and your B gaps with uh, – I used to call that, you know, the old 5-2 guys, double eagle. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. and Those uh, backers might be a little wider sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're double eagling right there, and uh, 
uh, I, I'm, I'm following you. And uh, I got some follow-up questions to that, but keep rocking. I got the 5-3 the defense here uh, with one high safety we, we'll face sometimes as well. And you can – this two-man outside veer – you can run versus this defense. I got just a couple clips. We only got this one time, I believe. Um, we get the five two more, but uh, th this is what I mean by five three. So you still got your your uh, your nose and your guards are covered by the three techniques and your stand up ends and your nine techniques, but you have three backers inside instead of just two. Yeah, I'll show you some clips of that here in a minute. All right. All right. I want to show you two more things that are unique to our to our offense coach and then and then and then we'll move on and get into the clips and the scheme I promise you. Mm -hmm. Oh no, hey. Okay. I'm learning. All right, and uh, on our offense, we utilize something called smart splits. I read Tony DeMeo's book. I was just going to say you got that from my <laughs> man Tony. I'm yeah. Have to get you on the phone with Tony. Get ready, <laughs> get ready to talk for about 3 hours with Tony. <laughs> and get ready for your sides to split. He is the funniest dude. Is he? <laughs> he's forgot more option football than, than I'll ever know. But, uh, yeah, that smart splits, Tony DeMeo. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, Mac, uh, our quarterback coach at East Bay actually played for him at uh, – what's that school out there in Kansas? It starts with a W, coach. Oh, mm. gosh. I don't know. I, I, West Virginia. Uh, uh, I know he's – Concord or, or someplace like that, but yeah, go, yeah. I, I'll think of it here in a minute, but he, yeah. uh, he's, he's an awesome dude. But this is smart splits here, coach. And uh, um, basically, our base remember, I told you we're an inside veer operation. Um, our base split, we're trying to get three foot. If we can plus that even more, that's great. You know what I mean? We're going to take those defensive linemen as far as they'll go, you know what I mean? And try to create some space inside for our fullback to operate. Well, uh, based on a scheme that we're running, we'll increase or decrease our splits. So if you look down here at the bottom, you can see we're down to two foot or maybe even less um, of a split here. And the reason is we're either going to run outside veer or we're trying to get to the perimeter, so we're bringing the edge in. This is a good picture of uh, the two different ways that we'll, we'll kind of align. And um, All right, that's, that's smart splits. And outside veer, we're going to use uh, – the one towards the bottom will use a tighter splits uh, so we can the guard and tackle can get their double team cool all right this is the last little thing that's unique about this um how we're doing the two-man surface outside veer play well i remember i uh, i told you earlier i didn't want to teach a new set of steps or a new path you know because that's going to steal practice time you know mm -hmm. and i'm trying to make this as easy as possible on my kids that you know, when you add a new formation, we call it cheap because, you know, just line up a new way. You know, we're, we can run the same plays that we have in our offense. It's very cheap. So I wanted to try to create this as cheap as possible without putting mm -hmm. in this in big old scheme and a bunch of new language, right? Yep. So we, we do what we call we Y off. Um, uh, so on ins. Uh, all right, let me I, – I screwed up there a little bit, Coach. <laughs> I started getting excited, man. Yeah, man. That's what it's all about, dude. Yeah. Keep, keep rocking it. Keep, uh, here we go. Keep so I got that a ball on me, man. <laughs> so I got you. I got you a picture here of uh, how we teach the mesh point or the fullback's path for our outside beer. Now we tell our fullback and quarterback the mesh point is just like inside beer. We're gonna meet up at the butt of the guard. That's our mesh point. Okay. But one more um, bit of information that we add to it is for the fullback. That if he gets the football, what he's going to do is he's going to – he's underneath that uh, Emilos, the end man on the line of scrimmage, and he's going to Y off. So he does not have the ability, like on the other two plays, inside beer and midline, to have a – he doesn't have a cutback key, in other words. Mm -hmm. He has to stay on a, on, on a veer-type path, and we're, we call it Y off. And sometimes I'll even coach it. I'll, if, if a kid's not getting it, I'll go get a piece of rope. I got like a 15 or 20 foot piece of rope and I'll have, and I'll put the rope out there, the path I want him to take, you know, mm. stretch it out. But I want him to Y off the mesh. Okay. Underneath the emulos and then run a path away from the defense to, from the hash to the numbers to the sideline. And I got a video I'm going to share with you on that. Uh, real yeah, quick. Yeah. Okay. All right, coach, I'm going to transition here now. All right, so you're going to – this is actually from the picture you just saw showed about lying off. <clears throat> so now we're going to see it live. 
Now, this particular play isn't necessarily outside veer, but it gives you the idea of what I'm talking about for what I want the fullback to do to Y off once he's underneath the Emelos mm. here. And uh, I'll run it a couple times for you here. Um, and you'll see what I'm kind of meaning, hash number sideline. Okay, here we go. Yep. Butt of the guard, Y off. Get outside the trash, get away from the defense. Here we go. Can you kind of see that, Coach? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Hash number sideline. Instead rounded, of hitting the vertical. Yeah. yeah, you're rounding the field and um, staying away from the bad guys. There you go. All right, so you'll see that Y off as we go into these clips. Again. So what you're telling me now is uh, uh, I see a slide here now, Tony, right after we saw rounding the field there, base wave vanilla. Get into this. All right, Coach. So this is how uh, – crap. Let me show you one more thing, Coach, before we get started. No I'm problem. so sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. You know what? I need to show you – I need to show you how I saw Navy run it. All right. Remember I was telling you that uh, I was watching a game when the – so let me show the. I'm going to share this with you, Coach. <clears throat> All right. So you're now. Yeah, the point you made was you're sitting there on a Saturday afternoon and you're watching Navy and you're seeing that double eagle getting them B gaps and A gaps all gummed up and you're going, "Crap, they're running outside beer to a two-man surface." Is this what you're showing me? Yes, sir. You couldn't explain it any better. <laughs> uh -huh. But you, this is this is your five two, right? And uh, the, what you don't see down here at the very bottom, there's another receiver down here at the bottom. I'll st stretch out so you can kind of see the corners. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So they're going to run it to the left. In our language, we just call this fourteen and fifteen. That's what we call outside of here. Mm -hmm. And you'll see this. Uh, I'll run it a couple times for you. There's old Keenan Reynolds. I'm like, oh my goodness! This, this he's from my neck. You know, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, are you? Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, he played at Good Pasture High School in Nashville, and uh, he's around some really good people down there. And uh, he's a Nashville fella. He's he's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. I mean, he's he's all, he's great. I lo I love him. I, I mean, I'm a big Navy fan because <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, but uh, I want you to notice a couple things. I want you to notice the play side tackle here, the left tackle blocking down. So we got a double between the left guard and left tackle. And then watch the quarterback um, footwork. It's going to be the same as inside veer. And the path of the fullback is going to be the same. So remember how we started out showing you a quarterback running down the line of scrimmage to get to the butt of the tackle to mesh on outside veer? Uh, correct. That was the very first one or two, yeah. Yeah, so here you got what looks to be inside veer. But now we're running it and to where you wouldn't normally run it to when you have a B gap player. You know what I mean? This is, this is, this is a, uh, inside veer is a play where you want to try to run to an open B gap, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of what got me thinking, Hey, they're running outside veer. Hmm. So I noticed Navy over the next couple of games running, running this more and more. All right. So kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier is I was trying to, keep it as simple as I could on my kids. I didn't want to have to teach them new footwork, you know, a new path. And even down to my wingbacks and guys on the perimeter of the receivers, I didn't want to have to teach them a whole new set of rules. So the base way that I teach 14 and 15 to a two man surface is we just keep it just like 12 and 13, which is our inside veer play. So I asked my wingback, he's here in red, the Z man, right? He's he, I got him drawn up here in red. I said, what do you do on 12 and 13? our inside veer play versus a too high. And he says, go to safety coach. I said, well, guess what? That's your same rule. You got that same rule. We're keeping it simple. And you're only going to change what you do if I tag it. So I have some tags I'm going to share with you here, like wedge and load, or uh, we switch block on the perimeter. We call it cloud. I'll show you some of those things. But these guys can play fast and confident because they know coach didn't tag it. So I'm just going to do my base rules just like I do on my inside view play. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I want to also talk to you about the term 
moosh pitch. You ever heard of that, Coach? I have not. That's a new one. <laughs> I learned this from uh, the guys at Luther College. They, they taught me this. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, Paul Johnson used to say, whenever there was not a designated pitch guy, um, like, for example, in this drawing that I have up here for you, um, there's, there's not a true pitch guy outside of our Emilos, who's the guy we're reading, the end man on the line of scrimmage. There's not a true pitch key. So that's what we call the moosh pitch, which we're going to pitch off the next guy who shows up. Mm. Could be that linebacker that I have there in blue I that scrapes, scrapes over the top. But, man, if he plays downhill, Coach, you may have two on nobody. You know what I mean? If yeah. you get outside there. Um, I'll show you a clip here later on where my, uh, my wing back actually uh, missed a block. Well, safety shows up, we pitch off of him. That's basically what a moosh pitch is. And sometimes you can manipulate using formations to where you'll end up in a situation where you have a moosh pitch. Mm. I would think you'd want a moosh pitch on every dead gun play, man, because that's, yeah. <laughs> that's one on none, brother, right there. That's good option football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to hit the next slide here, I think. And uh, – there we go. Here, 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 here's where I got it tricked out with a bunch of rules for you. You want to, you want me to go show you the yeah. base? Yeah. No, show. no, go ahead. You do, you, you keep doing football, dude. Okay. I'll show you some, uh, some base. Uh, this is 15. This is 15. So it's going to be outside the ear to the left. Now this is a five, two, Here's your two safeties. And these DNs are playing with their hand in the dirt, which it don't matter. They're still DNs, right? No. Yeah. All right, so here we go. We're going to run 15. Uh, I got my little freeze. I'm trying to freeze them on first down and get a free five yards there, Coach. <laughs> pretty disciplined. That tells yeah. me something good right there. You're going to have to block and tackle. That's right. We get the pitch off. Get a nice little run. Unfortunately, we got a penalty there. Our wide receiver held a little bit there on the perimeter. But this is an example of the moosh pitch is what I was telling you. Because remember, rule for uh, the wing back here is he's going to safety. That's his base rule uh, unless I tag him load or something like that to go to the linebackers. So if this linebacker plays downhill um, and the DN here takes the dive, the quarterback pulls it, we're two for two on the outside, and we're we're in that good option football. Me and you were just talking about, Amen. right? Amen. So uh, that and that's kind of what happens here. The quarterback just pitched it. And there was no really reason to pitch it. I'm glad he did. He let the guy who's got some wheels go get it, you know. But this would be an example of the moose pitch. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a quick variation. Um, what we did without without changing who the pitch key is or anything like that, we got the same defense still. And what we did is we uh, we we added a tag of the switch block. So I'm going to have the receiver and the wing back just just switch. We call it cloud, mm-hmm. and um, this gives our uh, receiver a better angle on the safety, who's a little bit more aggressive. And uh, same thing, it's going to end up being a uh, a moosh pitch. And I think on this one, Coach, you'll see my wing back. Um, let's see. Let's see who we end up pitching off of here. Yeah, the receiver. Did you see that? Watch the receiver. Yeah, the receiver just got beat underneath, and quarterback felt. <clears throat> and that's that's the moosh pitch. He just he just pitched off the next guy who showed up, and I'm thank God he did. This kid he pitches to runs a four four, hmm. and he's gone. I want to pitch to him, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, a residual effect of uh, when I've played around with the outside uh, veer in the ancient days of me coaching, what we never could do, we could never get the ball pitch because, you're, A, you're going out to a three-man surface, so, so the quarterback's going a little wider, fullback's going a little bit wider, quarterback disengages, and and we never could get the ball pitched. and. Uh, I, I just see a residual effect right here. You've you've still got the triple option in play here, running the outside zone. That's uh, out, outside veer. I mean, yeah. I mean, you you hit the nail right on the head. Team scheme was to take the dive away, but we still got it. <laughs> I like it. Here's uh, here's one more. 
we don't we don't hit the big play, but man, it was almost. We're two for two on the perimeter here. We're clouding it still. The receiver gets a little bit better block here. You see, he gets that sealed. Uh, we got a little switch block going on. Quarterback trips up, but he still gets the pitch off. And oh, the wing back. Mm -hmm. Man, if he gets that uh if he gets that blocked up, we're in business. Yeah. You know, just with the dive, you got them all gummed up inside. I mean, you got nine kids at the <laughs> point. I mean, that's and now you got the ball on the perimeter with speed. Yeah, that's a great point. Here's uh this will be the last one I show you for the base. But here's another five two. We're kind of in a compressed set. We call it double crunch. But uh, I believe the quarterback makes a, a bad read here. You'll see the dive if he would have just handed off the dive. Is he coming down here to the bottom or up top? Yeah, yeah. This is 14, our outside okay, rear to the right. All right. We're reading uh, the stand up here. Mm. Yeah. We, we, I mean, I, I'm two for two on the outside there. I've got uh, my wing back and my wide receiver, you know, up on their secondary. Mm. If wow. he just hands the ball off, yeah, we're we're in business. So. Yeah. Well, I respect you. I respect you showing a bad play because coaches learn <clears throat> just as much from that right there as they do the 80-yard gainers, man. Yeah. Uh, we. I know what you mean there, coach. All right. Let's get into uh, tags. I showed you the switch tag already and uh, showed you the base vanilla way. Let's get into uh, changing it up a little bit, how we change the pitch key, how we basic. Remember I was telling you about a moosh pitch. Well, now if I want to make a, a guy, uh, you know, and actually identify who the pitch key is actually going to be or, or manipulate the, the pitch key, this is how we would do it. All right, so we're going to kind of go through our tags and how we change the pitch key and do all that manipulation. <clears throat> So here what you see, Coach, is uh, 14, what we call wedge. We also can call 14 load. Th those are just two tags that tell our play side wing uh, that he's going to block the inside play side linebacker and pin him to the inside like a load scheme. Yep. And uh, if we call wedge, we want him to be underneath the emulos, uh, force his body underneath and get to that backer and pin him in. If uh, if we got like a, a stand up nine technique and he's kind of playing loose, we'll wedge it. Mm. If he's if he's playing real real tight, we'll just go ahead and load it. And load is till to go outside the emulos. Does he ever have the option to do that? You guys have a good vantage point, and you don't I, know whether to tag it with a load or a wedge, and you just teach the kid. You take the best uh, best uh, option to get there. Uh, that's I've done that in the past and just it's just one of those things my preference is I try to eliminate any guessing like I'm I love telling like I know that like some coaches that uh, just take the perimeter uh, for example you know they'll, they'll, they'll let the they'll teach the kids whether to load or arc or, or switch block on the perimeter based on the coverage well I'm 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 an of opposite uh, opinion where like I want to control all that because <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm trying to let the kids play fast and I want the screw up to be on me. You know what I mean? Good point. And so for, for for me, I don't give them the option. You know, I want them to play fast and confident. Now that being said, if I have a wedge call and they can't get their body through there, then it'll turn into a load. If that makes sense, they'll sure. they'll go. They'll, they'll sure. go outside and, and turn it into a load. Yeah. But, but when I'm teaching it, this is a wedge, this is a load, and then we'll deal with, uh, you know, the variations or, you know, different scenarios. Right. That be confident. That's, that, that, you'll see that's kind of how I do it, um, just just because of preference, you know, uh, breaking the game down to little bite-sized pieces, you know what I mean? Hey Amen. Good, good points. On this slide here, Coach, that you see, um, besides the wedge scheme that I'm showing you, this is like the nuts and bolts, the base way, every other position on the field would, uh, would uh, uh, their rules for, for outside veer to the right. So we can, go by, we can go through that real quick if you want. I think some of it we've, we've already gone through. Um, like the smart splits, we'll mm -hmm. reduce our splits yeah. two foot. As far as the option count rules, 
you know, we're going to read the emulos, the end man on the line of scrimmage is our number one read key, dive read key. And then the pitch is going to be the next man outside of the, uh, of the pitch key, uh, of the, uh, the emulos. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you get a moose, sometimes in this situation where we wedge or load and uh, versus a too high secondary, we're saying, Hey, we're going to make the safety our pitch key. Cause he's the next man out. A lot of times too high secondaries, you know, we've got that motion, they rotate down. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it, it, he ends up turning into almost like an outside linebacker and like a four, four type defense. You know what I mean? He, Cause That's he's cool. coming, he's coming down to like a linebacker level. That's kind of how we teach that, uh, that read. Fullback is, you know, why he's got the same path as inside veer and he's whying off. Mm -hmm. which we talked about earlier. Um, the backside wing back, he's we use uh, ready set go. That's our that's our snap count. So he's leaving on the R ready. We don't we don't have any like uh, uh, signal for him to go. He just we just rep it and he leaves on the R already. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how we do it to time up. His path is going to be to the tail of the fullback, and then you can see I drew the uh, his line flat to the sideline, and then when the quarterback turns up, he turns up. We want a four by one pitch relationship there uh, with the quarterback. Okay. So he's hauling butt, but he also has to learn to throttle down and adjust to the quarterback. Mm. And that's just, go, that's just uh, something that you work out with your reps. Yeah. Play side OL, we're going to treat it like a gap scheme. Everybody's down on the play side. That's, that's just like traditional outside view, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're just running it to the two man service on the back side here. Um, you'll see some clips of Navy where they count the center as part of the backside scheme, which we've done that in the past. But, Coach, we've had some problems um, having our backside guard being able to scoop a nose. Mm -hmm. So what you see here that I've drawn up is we went to uh, – when we're running this play, what we'll do is we'll just base up the nose with the center and we'll run a scoop uh, scheme with the uh, backside guard and tackle. That's just that our preference. I know there's going to be schools out there that, that will do a full scoop with the, with the center, but uh, we just, we just kind of got away from that uh, kind of deal. Uh, on the perimeter, play side wide receiver, basic rules, run off versus man, stalk versus uh, off coverage. And then the backside receiver, he's going to try to work a cutoff. If it's too high, he's cutting off the backside safety. If it's one high, he's going to just stay with the corner and cut, cut, cut the corner off on his side. Quarterback, quarterback steps, got him down there for you. Just like we teach inside beer. You know about the clock method, Coach. You know, like you're standing in the middle of a clock. Mm -hmm. 12, 12 is straight ahead, 6 is behind you, 3 mm -hmm. is to your right, 9 is to your left. Well, we teach our quarterback outside beer to the right here. We're going to step at 3 o'clock. And then um, that second step is going to be at two o'clock. But but these two steps got to be quick. You That's what talk. you showed in that one good and bad uh, mess right there. Get your feet yes. back in the ground quickly. Yes, sir. Get your eyes on that read key. <clears throat> it's, it's funny you uh, remember you were making a comment about the eyeballs being disciplined and being on the uh, uh, being on the read key. Yep. I'm laughing because uh, I have some young quarterbacks that that's a problem for sometimes. And uh, you ever seen the horse with the blinders? Oh, yeah. So I've taken my index card that I got my practice schedule on, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll fold it up and put it inside their face mask to stop them from peeking back at the fullback. That's pretty <laughs> smart. I like yeah, that. Yeah, because it's the fullback's responsibility to get the mesh correct. We all have the same common mesh point, but we tell the fullback, hey, you have no action key for a cutback here on this play. So you got to get your belly button over the football and the quarterback's got his eyes on the read so he can make that right. Mm. So anytime there's an issue, I put it on the fullback because he's got to get his belly button over the ball. That's a, Hey, that's a simple little uh, fix right there. Three by five cards in the face mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old horse, the old horse blinder. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Um, Coach, you want me to break this up and uh, throw some video in here, or you want me to keep going? I think there's, um, like, I got this this Thunder tag, which is the wide receiver coming to load. And oh. then uh, uh, that's it. So I could just go over this. Yeah, and just then... show, show, those, show those two slides real quick so the guys can make a note and then uh, show us a little film. And, uh, and we're good, man. I've learned a hell of a lot of football. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, this is this is the the, the wedge, and um, 
this this is going to be where the safety is going to end up being our pitch key. I think you're on the you're still back there on the yeah there we go. Okay, here we go. Um, this is another way that we can um, manipulate the pitch key. Remember moosh pitch from earlier, coach? I do. Here's another moosh pitch situation. We would go X and Y over, which is an unbalance where we just bring a receiver from one side to the other. And you've probably seen um, Georgia Tech do this or Navy do this. Uh, so this X receiver here, you know, he just he was over here on the numbers and he just comes over. Well, usually we get those guys really, really wide. Um, but when we teach our guys to adjust, just like the O-line, adjust their splits to the concept. Mm -hmm our wide receivers to adjust their split to the concept so here we're going to have the receiver actually load the inside backer and we call it thunder that's just what we call it and uh, the receiver the inside receiver knows that he's going to reduce his split all the way down almost if he was in the same position like like a double crunch that I talked about earlier or yeah. compressed, like a compressed set um, if you know if, if, if you have a problem um, with this guy's split um, being too wide or being too tight, we actually have a word we use. I don't mind sharing. It's uh, we'll scream Tulsa or Big Money. <laughs> mm -hmm. So instead of instead of adding instead of uh, adding uh, a bunch of other formations for you know this guy, um, the X Man being in different positions, we just add, we just have a word and we'll holler out to him. Uh, you know, let's say his name's Steve. Hey Steve, Big Money, Big Money, and he'll yeah. he'll know to widen out. I will say, hey, Steve, you know, Tulsa, Tulsa. And, you know, <laughs> I got I to gotta tighten in. And that's literally how we do it, Coach. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's that's all communication, man. That's what it yeah. And you're not in front of 80,000 people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he can hear you. Yeah, I got another funny one for you uh, about splits for O-line. <laughs> you know how we use the smart splits? Uh -huh. uh, I told you, I tell the O-line when I'm teaching them this, I say, uh, Hey guys, I used to date three different girls in high school. You know, I had, <laughs> I had I dated Wilma, I dated Tammy, and I dated Norma. Well, Norma, she was just normal, you know. <laughs> and then uh, Wilma, she was really wide, <laughs> and then Tammy, Tammy was tiny. So that's how I'm going to communicate when I about your splits to you. So you'll hear us on the sideline. Tammy, 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 or Wilma, Wilma, Wilma. You know, we've, we've got to send a reminder for their splits. Wow. And these kids, and these kids they, they know what the hell those mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> they won't forget that, man. That's coaching right there. That's teaching, dude. Like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. Instead of having 100 different names for formation. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. We just have adjustments. So yeah, I think I've dated too many Wilmas, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, coach. <laughs> Oh man. I'm married to a Tammy now though, brother. That's all it counts. It's the one you end up with. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna show you this uh some video here later, coach, uh, of the Thunder from the X over and you'll see right. my receiver will be tighter and hey, play side wing here, the Z Man. What's your base rule? I'm going to safety. Mm -hmm. You don't his rule don't change unless I tag it. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is our double crunch set. We compress it in, and I got a thunder tag. That tells the receiver he's going to load the place on linebacker. Play side wing here. My Z-man's going to safety like his base rule. And what happened now is the corner becomes our pitch because he's the next man out. Last one. This is trips, and we're going to uh, – trips right, and we're going to run outside veer, two men outside veer to the left and we're going to turn the corner into our pitch key because we're calling thunder so we're going to have our now normally this backside receiver okay is going to be out here on the numbers coach but he knows that he's got a thunder so he just automatically adjusts his splits to the concept and he comes in tight mm -hmm. our guys love to crack back and hit linebackers um and again if he forgets I'm yelling at him, Steve, Tulsa, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. So we don't we don't have to call this any other formation. These guys should know, and they adjust to the concept that we're running. That can be lethal right there, brother. Yeah. We actually uh, – I'm, I'm going to show you a clip in a little bit. Uh, I got this receipt. We had this linebacker playing downhill. So instead of calling thunder, we called smack. So the smack for us tells him to go to safety. Mm. So the backer played downhill. We pulled the ball, 
and we blocked this. We had we had a hat on the safety instead of just letting them go free, <clears throat> and we ended up with a two on one on the corner. It was yeah. beautiful. That beautiful. Is. All right, I'll show you some clips now, Coach. Let's go. All right. Got a compressed set. We're going to run outside veer to the right. So this is going to be 14, Coach. Let me see what the tag is here. I don't remember what the tag is. This is just wedge. I'll show it to you one more time real quick. I'll back it up. This will be wedge. So here's your Emilos, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you can argue with me. This might be more of a 3-4 look, but these guys are in a 4-I, and they're pinching. Yeah. So, you know, for us, we're going to tighten our splits, and he's going to be a B-gap player. So we're down. We're going to call him the uh, the Emilos. We're going to – this is this is wedge. So the play side wing is going to be underneath and pin the inside backer. And this receiver should be to the safety. So here's your read. Here's your pitch. The corner is going to end up being your pitch. Wow. This is this is Navy versus Notre Dame. Mm. Easy money. Easy money, right? You ain't kidding, brother. Let's pay attention to the to the quarter the quarterback fullback. Yeah, operation. I keep it keep it froze right there. Right here? No, 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 right. I keep there you go, right there. I mean that is couldn't be an easier read. It's an oh yeah, that that nine technique is flying out and everything's walled off here to the inside. You got your receiver mm. around that read, and he's up here to the safety. Boom. Easy money. Why wouldn't you run triple option, coach? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, here you go. This is going to be uh, 15. This is going to be to the left. <clears throat> and I believe this is a thunder tag. So this will be the receiver coming here to this inside backer. Here we got a four eye, but, again, he's going to be a B-gap player for us. We're down on him doubling. Play side tackle, play side guard. This uh, wing back should be up here to the safety. That's his base rule. Here's our read. Here's our pitch, which is the corner. Hmm. Round in the field right there, hash number sideline. Yes, sir. Wying off a little bit right there. Boom, wying off, right? Getting out of side the jump. Boom. That's hmm. old Chris Wayne. He's pretty good. Okay, here you go, coach. This is going to be a uh, regular base formation. So the receivers are flexed out and uh, we're going to run 15 to the left outside of here. Um, here's our read. And the safety is actually going to be our pitch because I'm going to have the wing load block the play side inside linebacker. Mm -hmm. You'll see a, a example of a load. So wedge was underneath. Yeah. Load is around, but you want to be tight. So this linebacker can't, you know, duck under. Try to capture that outside number. Mm -hmm. All right. All oh, the bulls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bulls. This is this is uh, Navy playing USF here. Third and one. It's going to be fourteen. Thunder. So I'll run this back for you, Coach. Mm -hmm. Remember, Thunder tells the receiver, "You're going to basically load block the inside linebacker." We're going to read the emailos turn the pitch, the corner into the pitch key and the play side wing blocks his basic, his base rules, which is go mm -hmm. to see. Leave the corner. <clears throat> Two on one and on the corner. Of yes, ball sir. Oh, no. Easy read there. Mm -hmm. He's a stand up here. Mm. He didn't want no part of that uh, big fullback there, did he? <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know what this is called? It's called bad scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Memphis still in that 5-2, right? They got the receiver crunched up here. We would just call this crunch left. And that's what we call it. <clears throat> this is going to be uh, 15 thunder. So just to remind you, this is going to be the receiver thunder blocking or loading the play side inside linebacker. What's the base rule of the wing back? Go to safety, safety. coach. That means he's the read, corners the pitch. Hmm. Pretty easy. I told you um, the vanilla base way, right, Coach? Mm -hmm. So here, here now I got uh, 
remember, we're going to tag it up now a little bit. And this is my guys here uh, versus that 5-2. And uh, we got 14 wedge. So got my play side wing here. He's going to be up underneath the stand up, and he's going to pin the inside backer. If the quarterback pulls it, the safety would be that next man as the pitch. I mean, that's easy money right there, Coach. Mm -hmm. This is the same play, just a little tighter shot. You'll see uh, how easy of a read it was for our quarterback. We checked the play, I believe. Just flipped the play. Wow. <laughs> I wish each week was like that, man. <laughs> Coach. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, here we go. We're going to take the play left. And uh, – Man, check this defense out now. I don't know what you call this, man, the UFO or whatever. You ever get this where everybody and their brother standing up and you know, coming with a blitz? Mm -hmm. But you still got these stand-up nine techniques, you know. So we're going to try to just block everybody down and run the run the ball off uh, off tackle. They're outside of here. That's called feast or famine. I think I know what's about to happen right here. <laughs> this is thunder. So my, wing, uh, my receiver went inside. Yeah. There you go. We almost got in there, Coach. Almost. Yeah. Well, she, you first and goal to go. You know, the thing about going against those defense with a disciplined offense like you have, hey, fellas, there are going to be three or four plays, man, where they're going to rock you. They're going to sack you. They're going to get you for tackle for loss. But then it's going to be 88 and out the gate. It's, it's actually – this is a different play, uh, like another play, but it's the same play, 15 Thunder. Fullback's loving it. You know, he's getting up saying, feed me. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I think we got called for a penalty for motion or something. <clears throat> Your lineman come off football, too. This is uh, – here we got X over. Remember I was showing you this yep. earlier? Yep. Unbalanced for it. Yep. Yeah, unbalanced. The secondary didn't rotate, so we still got the safety in the corner backside. There are two high defense. So we actually added a hat, and we're up a man. Wow. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to thunder block. He's going to cut the number two receiver. He's cut his split in. He's going to come in and block the play side inside linebacker. What's his base rule? The play side wing. Safety. I'm going to safety. safety. And it's going to be a moosh pitch situation. You think? <laughs> nah. Well, actually we wedged it. We wedged it. I'm, I must have not, I didn't have that tag on there. <clears throat> I, Either that or the, he messed it up, but this play side wing ended up wedging it. So we had two guys on the play side linebacker. That means he would have been, if he would have pulled it, yeah. the safety would have been your pitch. You'll you see have them numbered up, though, man. Yeah. I, think I, you'll see see. There, I see there where you can knock your fullback. Just You don't have to go back, but your fullback didn't round the thing. He sort of danced a little bit at the five-yard gain. And Is this the same play? It is, but just a tighter yeah. shot. You're, you're yeah. right. Man, if he would have wired off that. Yeah, if he wired off. Yeah, I, I love that teaching uh, teaching term. Yeah, wired been, off. Why off? Golly. Yeah, I allowed the been. pursuit to catch him in the back. All right, here you go. This is going to be an example of the moosh pitch. We're going to be two for two on the outside. We're good. Uh, this is going to be 15 thunder. You see this is my Y over. Mm -hmm. and he's tight in here. Wing backs up on the safety. We got the pitch wow. off. This kid's playing in North Carolina right now. He's a DB there. Mm. My other wing back, he's at uh, Western Kentucky. <laughs> so they're both wow. DBs, though. Go figure, right? <laughs> well. Yeah, for us, they were they were excellent running backs. Mm. Here it is. Same play. Just We just call it again. <laughs> Keep it going, right? Yeah. Actually, we wedge it this time, Coach. Well, you know, the heyday of uh, back there, Oklahoma, triple option, pure wishbone. I mean, heck, they called two plays a game, man. Yeah, that's true. And the switcher said hang a half a hundred on them, you know, just running two dead gum football plays. Here's, here's a bad play. Uh, they're running that UFO or whatever, junk defense. Yeah. This guy's like a running back. He's up here, and he splits the scoop. The, the backside – he runs a backside A gap, and he makes us pay for it, and we don't get the scoop on him. Mm. You'll see it real quick. This kind of ruins the 
runs a play, you see the backside A penetration. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, again, running again and you're going, you know, all the yeah. way just because they're going to run out of lanes. That's a – No question. <clears throat> it takes a disciplined defense to keep you off the scoreboard. Later in the game, we were running that uh, – because we were running that unbalanced X and Y overset, uh, they started – finally rotating their secondary. So this is a safety covering number two. We had hit a big pass on them too. They left number three here uh, uncovered. We just slipped him up the field and caught a touchdown mm -hmm. on that. So they're rotating now, leaving only the corner on the backside because this safety here is on the midline here. So he doesn't count to the, to the right. So uh, long story short, we're going to read here on the Emilos and our pitch is going to be the corner. We're going to take it to the nub coach is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's going to be a wedge, so he's going to be underneath and pin that backer. Mm. That quarterback, he's at Luther College. He's playing now pretty good. Uh, and there's Mr. Referee, right, ruining my day. Uh -huh. <laughs> he called us uh, – he called the fullback there. All right, this is uh, – I wanted to show you that 5-3 defense. Uh, I got one or two clips. We didn't run it a whole lot, Coach. This is at the beginning of the year before we really got into it. But this is trips left, so we're trips into the boundary, and this is a 5-3 team. And we're actually going to crack the stack linebacker and turn the corner into the pitch key. So this is a 5-3. Mm -hmm. You'll notice this wide receiver, instead of being way out yonder, he's cut his split down. He adjusted to the concept, and he didn't really get a good block here on the stack. You'll see he missed the stack linebacker, and, man, if he got him, that fullback is gone. Wow. Yeah, we just didn't see the 5-3 the rest of the year, really. This uh, is another bad example, but uh, it's a 5-3. We got trips. Um, this is actually trips right. We're going to be uh, running it to the left. The receiver reduces split. This kid doesn't have football in his heart. <laughs> I hate to say it, but his job is to crack the stack here, and we want to turn the corner into our pitch. And you'll see here if he just, man, would just tighten his split and bring it, we, we'd be off to the races mm -hmm. there again. You got to have somebody that will come in there and bring it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, follow Tony there at Three Phase Football on Twitter and uh, just talk a little bit about the Mesh Point Monday too, Tony. Yeah, please come and follow. Any, any kind of triple option uh, coaches are welcome. We even have some DCs uh, uh, peeking on our chat every now and then, Coach. They're trying to figure out how to stop this. <laughs> uh -oh. I think that's, you know, that's, that's a great thing about football. You know, the thing about it, if you don't run this offense, you're going to have to defend this offense. And uh, so that's, uh, that's the beautiful thing uh, about sharing. Yeah, it's great. Every Monday night, we'll gather at 8 o'clock Eastern on Twitter. Follow at Three Phase Football, and we'll have four questions on a triple option topic. Last week, we talked zone option, which is a new, new concept. Everybody's kind of buzzing about that Navy runs, and uh, a lot of the academies are running. Uh -huh. But hey, no matter if you're just learning or you're, you know, a college coach, you know, all are welcome, and um, you know, come and participate and ask questions. Follow coaches back. And it's 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 great. That's a lot of now put that put that uh, icon on them t-shirts, man, and I want one. Okay. <laughs> hey, you got it, man. You hit, now, uh, what size? What what size are you, Rick? Oh, I'm 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 going to rock the large. That way, I can have a little wiggle room in there. You got it, man. Uh, remember, I'm married to Tammy, so I got to stay Tammy. <laughs> only guys are going to only guys are going to get this if they paid attention to Tammy. Okay. Hey, That's go, right. Hey, I want to see uh, the last thing here, Tony, and then uh, we'll say goodbye. I want to uh, make sure everybody knows about the uh, 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 the webcast, not the webcast, but the uh, seminar you're going to put on, the webinar. There you go. Yeah, we're going to have a webinar. I'm going to be advertising it. Uh, matter of fact, probably starting today. I've locked in all four coaches. Uh, we've got some college coaches. We've got some, um, you know, you know Rich Hargett. He's a great guy. He's a know Rich uh, very well. Um, has a lot of things uh, published with uh, Coach's Choice. And um, so we even got the Pistol uh, Flexbone chat guy or a, a Pistol Flexbone uh, Twitter account guy, uh, Jeff Glistener. He's going to uh, do do some Pistol for us. But uh, all great coaches. and um, I know Jeff. Uh, Jeff, uh, 
Jeff and, uh, and, and Coach Paulson did a great uh, 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 pistol uh, option book and uh, smart dude, smart yeah. dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that they're going to do this uh, uh, little webinar for us. But, I, you know, Coach, there's, there's guys in, uh, that, that follow from all over the United States and uh, even, even internationally. I've got a guy from Denmark and Puerto Rico and Australia, all kind of places. They're not going to be able to come to a college and visit. So I just try to put something like this together on the basics so anybody from, you know, all around can – meet up on one place on a webinar. So they need to go to, they need to visit your website, three phase. That's the number three phase football.net and RSVP. Will the date be on there? I mean, so can they be on it live and then also there be pay to get on the recording or, or uh, uh, what's the date so that everybody can put it on their calendar. We're, we're going to start this in April. I just locked in the dates. Uh, matter of fact, this morning. Uh, okay. with my last coach. So, when you visit the website, Coach, I'll have the dates plus uh, which you can pick it. Like if you only want to watch Flexbone, you can just pick that or you can save some money and watch all four uh, for, for the $60 down there at the bottom. But I'll have all this information updated here uh, by the end of today on the website and how they can RSVP and all the dates for them. Well, man, uh, Tony, you put the football on us today, dude. And, uh, just, uh, and that's just one play. There's one play, Coach. <laughs> and uh, so you guys make sure you stay with uh, Mesh Point, and, uh, and that's why you can pick uh, Tony's brain there at three phase at three phase football, and, uh, and get on this darn webinar here. And uh, that's a great list of uh, speakers. And uh, yeah, I personally know two of them, and uh, and Carson Newman's been running that that dead gum split back since Moby was a menace.